Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Ecostructural Machine Expert Training. I'm your host, Leandro Mada, and in this video what we're going to see is how we can communicate to a server or slave using the function blocks that we have in the software. So let's go to the presentation to know more about this. So there are three ways, or I believe we have only three ways to communicate using the Ethernet port of our PLCs with a server. We can use the Modbus IO scanner, Modbus TCP IO scanner. We can use the function blocks from this C, uh, um, PLC communication library. And then we have another one uh, related to using the Modbus function blocks directly. In this particular case, I'm going to use the standard uh, library function blocks that actually we have these four function blocks. We have read bar, write bar, read read bar, and single write. So depending on how or which function modbus function you want to use in your PLC to communicate to a device, then you will need to use these, uh, these function blocks. So all these function blocks are inside this library, um, the Schneider directory underscore PLC communication. And then in order to access directly, you can use sen dot, and then you can select the function block that you want. All these function blocks require an instance. Okay, so it's a function block. It's not a function. So in order to use them, what we need is to have an extractor that is generated by using this ADDM. If you don't want to use this, you just create your structure and manually add the things in there if you have more experience. Otherwise, you can use the uh, this ADM to generate this structure. And you can see here, it has a input and output. So you put information here in the address, you give the execute, and it generates the information that you need in order to use in these function blocks. Okay, so this is some of the things that you need to do. Um, one important thing is that you don't need to constantly execute this ADDM. Okay, you just need to execute it just one time to get the structure and that's it. Then, depending on how we are going to communicate to the device, the syntax that we need to use is different. In this particular case, as we are using the Ethernet port, we just need to use on the communication port number, the number three. Okay, if we are going to use Modbus serial, we just need to use the number one, and that information is on the help of this one, but I will create a different presentation for that. This particular one, we just need to use the Modbus TCP. So, number three, and between the curly brackets, we just need to use the IP address. And that's it, as is shown in this example. Okay. And the input of this one is a string. So we just need to use the single, uh, don't remember how it's called, but the single, the single icon. Okay. In order to enter the port that we're going to use and the IP address. Then, if you need to have a specific communication using a specific port and a specific unit ID. We have the possibility to define that as I show you in this. This is the, like the generic one that I have the communication port number, the IP address, the two dots in case you want to use an additional port and the unit ID next to it. So for example, by default, we have the file two and for the port and for unit ID 255. If I need something different, you can put the port that you want using this syntax that you have. Otherwise, just use this one. Okay. In this particular video, what I'm going to show you is how we can communicate or quickly communicate with a device. In my case, that this is Icon. So in that particular way, I have the number three, the IP address, and here I need to add the unit ID. Okay. So I'm going to show you that later. As soon as you get that, okay, you can proceed and use it 
on the function blocks. So that will give you only the address. Now we need to define how we're going to communicate to the server and how the data is going to be that we want to read and write. So there is an in each of the function block, there is a specific parameter that we need to configure, which is this object type. This object type, basically, we can use a enumerator and enum in order to easily assign the value, or we just use a constant, as I show over here. So this is the enum, mw, i, q, and i, w. Here is an example, how to use this that I did here or just the number of that, so it's going to be the same. Now, depending on this variable that you're going to use, is the function block of mod, is the modbus function block that you're going to use to communicate with the device. So, you need to pay attention here, okay? So, imagine that your device is not able to accept the uh, multiple read-write, register this one okay then it means that if you want to use the read write this function block this particular function block you cannot access to the data on that device so you will need to split that into function blocks one for multiple readings and multiple writings but not at the same time so it's important to know which are the modbus functions that the server is allowed to use Otherwise, you're going to have a problem there, an error in the communication. Probably you get the modus function not allow message. I don't know, but that's something that you need to check. Now, I put it here in green, uh, those blocks or those particulars in green, because using this function block, you will need to execute the order of when you're going to communicate with the device. Okay. And it gave you more time of programming. If you want to avoid that, and you want, and if you only use those function blocks to communicate to the device, then what you can do is to use the IO scanner, okay, which is uh, the best way in order to program and configure everything. But that we will explain that in another video. And I don't know if I've done it yet, but probably we have a video on that. So we need to define the data that we're going to read and write. Once we have selected that, we need to define, mm, I believe it's missing something. No, okay. I put it in writing over there. So we need to define two things first before this one. So we have already defined where is the device located and going to read. How is going to be the data in this device? But now we need to specify on this device which area are you going to read and write? So we need to define this first object or first write or first read object and then the quantity that I want to read and write in order to the PLC to know where to take a look at. Okay. So in these two, we just need to put the address of the device and the amount. Okay. If you just only want to read just one register, just put the number one and the other, the position. And that's it. Then what we need is the buffer that's going to have the information ready for this function block to read and write into the other side. And for that, we just need to create an array or use just a word. Okay. And then we just need to use the function ADR and between bracket between the parentheses, this array. So the system will read information that's going to read and write over here. Okay, but I'm going to show you that in an example. And then, of course, we had the possibility to make the diagnostics. So as soon as you execute this, you should be able to see the, uh, the function block in BC. As soon as it finish and everything is fine, then you should be able to see the done in true. In any other function blocks, in this case, I'm showing the write and read, but it's going to be the same for the other three. Then, if you are, I don't know, 
five minutes and busy because something happened, you have the possibility to use abort, and then you should be able to see this that is aborted. If you execute again and you receive the BC and then the error, then in order to identify what is the problem, we just need to check on the com error and upper error. So the upper error, this is taken from the online help. They give you full detail about what happened. Okay. Um, then depend on the com error, you can check the operational error. That operation error. So depending on the con error that you have, it gives you further information. Okay. And I believe this one related to the to the function block. So for example, the address format is incorrect. And the message will refuse. So depending on what is the problem of the communication, you should be able to see it. Okay. And if you don't have the, for example, depend on the timeout, if it's zero, if you find a wrong, you just can wait for the eternity. Otherwise, you can define the timeout. Uh, but basically, that's it. What you need, I'm going to give you in this particular video, is just one single read and write or multiple write using just one of these function blocks. The best would be to make some kind of cascade of the function block so you can execute by one by one. Okay, but that will give you in another video so I can give you further information. So now let's just use the ADDM, the read bar, and use the other blink. And I'm going to explain to you why the blink. So this is just one example. Okay, so the ADDM to generate the IP address and using this function block to just concatenate the information that I have. So I enter the IP address and then the unit ID and it gives me the information in a string. Okay, just just that. As you can see in there, it gives me number three that I need, the IP address between the brackets, the curly brackets, and then the number one for unit ID that I want over here. Then I can execute this in order to get the information that I want. Here I have the read and write for the information I want to. I have created these two function blocks that basically they have a case. So instead of you seeing the number, I see the what was the problem. And this is part of the library. I can share that also. And here I'm reading the com error and the operational error. Okay. We just have a few cases, that's all. But it's good to, to see that. And then here, the address that is taken from here. And I have the timeout in zero, so you can wait for eternity for timeout. And I believe I didn't show it out. No. Okay, I thought it was in the presentation. My bad. Okay, no worries. So, what is missing here, and I thought it has, is that what we can do with the data. So, as soon as you get the data from the from the buffer, okay, you just need to use it in your project. Otherwise, it's going to be in that array. So, there is a few ways to do that. So you can use the move. So you can move the data from the receive buffer, move it over here to make the move. And if you need to make some kind of comparison or reading the a real variable, you can use a converter. And you have, for example, on the library, uh, converters, you have these words as real. Okay, you have this over there in case you want to have the, the real value. Or a spite. So you have different converters from that library or the internet ones on the on the software. But this is how you can read the data. So as soon as you use the pointer from the ADR, you have the data available on the arrays. 
So this is a particular case. I'm going to communicate with the test island. So um, I can just start a new project. So let's create a new one. You, you. Let's move the point over here. Comes. So the first thing that we need is the ADDM dot ADDM instance ADDM. It will create that thing over there. Server is the server ADDM. So in it, it's going to initialize this information here and the address. I can really put 3192.168.1.31 is in my case. Going to be the number, uh, the first avatar after the bus coupler, number one, and this is a string, so we need a single like this so I can use in this way and here I can know the problems if there is any problems then what I need is to use the the write command send dot am write write bar instance write Then here I just need to use the same NDDM. Timeout is going to be zero. And here you just use the object type. It's going to be in this particular case. You need to know about the other device. It's a holding register. So I'm going to use NW. So you can use the value zero or use the object type. It is in send dot object type dot and w the first object is going to be the 8501 which is the common word for the avatars quantity and going to reach just one something that you need to check is probably you need to add one also subtract one so this is good for testing and the buffer i'm going to create the buffer and let me just double check the structure because i forget so i'm going to use these two copy and paste receive adr adr and then execute I can manually make the execution of this, but what I can do is to use this link, for example, instance com enable so enable com. So I can send the communication to be every, I don't know, one second. And then if it's not BC, oops, execute. Here I'm going to negate this negate and I'm going to use this one again here BC so as soon as this one is not BC I can execute it okay so this one can work fine uh, to easily read and write and everything um, then what I'm going to do is to 
move to the array receive zero. For example, uh, bit plus word instance word zero. For example, in this case, I'm going to send to this first word, which is going to be the CMD run. And this bit is CMD trip in this particular case in the test designer. So I can do this part on the logic in order to send the command to this uh, to the test designer. So by put this here to communicate, delete this part. We can try to connect to the computer to the test designer using this. So Let's see if this works. One of the things that you need to do is, of course, configure the IP address of the PLC and the test sign to be in the same range, but I'm not going to cover that. There is another video for that. So, First thing that we need to do is to execute this, the ADDM, to generate the structure that I need. As you can see here, this is the structure and ADDM. This is the structure by default is in zero. So if I execute this, it's done and you have all the information available here for this to work. Okay. So is this is done. This is the initial part. Then all we need to do is to execute this so we can write into the follow device. So uh, let's see. I'm connected right now with the test item and trying to this one turn it on. So if I enable the communication PC true and then PC true. I have the communication, there is no error at all. So if I run this, run, you can see that it's closed. Okay, I believe you probably hear the the thesis, the avatar, the starter. So if I turn this off, it's enough. Okay. So this is how you can play around with these um, with read and write. The read is going to be exactly the same. You just need to know the address and the quantity to receive and how are you going to access to the data that is going to be in the buffer. Okay, so having this structure is crucial in order to make it work and how to work with this. The other thing that you need to be careful is uh, trying to call all of these function blocks at the same time. So having a cascade or the step in order to access to each of them or send the command is going to be good. Okay. And if you want to do that, well, my recommendation is not to disable the call of the function block. The call is always called, but the execution needs to be uh, in the moment that you want. Okay. So leave the function block to be always executed, but uh, to be always called but the execution when it's the right time okay. so this is how we can use these function blocks okay this was a quick introduction how to use them um i'm going to show you later how we can make this cascade but i'll just give you the basic knowledge of the uh the function block how to use them okay so important to see the documentation only help for the communication errors and the operation error when you don't have the communication set the IP address on the same net network on those devices know the IP address and if you need any specific modbus function in order to communicate to the devices okay so thank you very much for watching this video and I see you on the next one